Sean Edwards, what's up? How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm here in Ocherius, Jamaica, you know, best place on earth, you know. Hey, you mentioned you're in Jamaica, and I heard they did a pretty much a good job in controlling the COVID situation there. So how's it been for you? Well, you know, um, for anybody working in the entertainment business, it has a devastating effect, you know, but we all come closer together and um, work together to make it happen, you know what I mean? Are you still keeping yourself quarantined or have you been able to go out anywhere? I mean, right now I'm out, you know, in um, the community of Pineapple in Ocho Rios. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we all have our masks. You know, that's pretty much that the best we can do when we go interact with each other. And um, I personally tend to interact with people who are, um, who I know are taking it serious. Oh, yeah. But if you're not taking it serious, I, you know, we can't hang out. I get that. I would say that I'm one of the people that are taking it seriously. I'm, you know, wearing my mask all the time. But I've been around people who are not taking it seriously. And I've actually kind of have to avoid being around them because they're not taking it seriously because they're either they're probably wearing their mask, but they're still going out at night and not wearing their mask. So I really am hesitant to hang around know other people but right, right. Yeah. so i want to talk about this album that you came out you recently came out with a compilation album a few months ago do you want to talk about that for a bit well uh the album is called tropical house cruises to jamaica the reggae collector's edition it's uh the third in my uh, series of these compilation albums where together some of the uh, giant names in um, reggae and we always try to use some of the biggest names also in other genres and we also try to introduce new artists and new talent and this edition uh, included um, the baby the rapper the baby yeah. he has a song here with uh, the locks and um, we also have Capleton, we have Sizzler, we have Peter and Mojo Morgan on this album. We have Singing Melody, we have Kip Rich, we have Wayne Wonder, and we also have, um, you know, some new talent on there. You know, we have Ed Sheeran's cousin Jethro Sharon on there. We have Don Ute on there. And, um, most importantly, the face of the project is the African artist, Shatawali, and he is the face of the project. And he recently had a collab with Beyonce called Already. And so um, our marketing strategy for the album was to target Africa, uh, because that's where Shatawali is from. And um, we wanted to emerge in a new market you know, where uh, reggae and dance hall are not really, is not really that prominent, but it's emerging. And uh, the strategy worked for us. We have also Shata Wali on the album, who is from Africa. And he is actually from Ghana. And uh, he has a new song now with uh, Beyonce called Already, new song and video. And he is the face of the album. And we targeted Africa. That was our target market, Africa, you know, as an emerging market in reggae and dance hall. And it worked for us. We uh, were able to go to number one in Ghana, in all genres. You know? So uh, big up to the people of Ghana, and we thank them for their support, you know, the Shakta movement. So why was Africa your target audience for this album? Well, um, I'm good friends with... Um, Mojo Morgan from Morgan Heritage. And uh, I watched how he uh, basically got fed up of the, you know, Western market. And he, he and Morgan Heritage decided to go over there and uh, to Africa and do some extensive work. And um, I learned from his experience, you know, because he kept sending me videos and so on and saying, hey, this is... Um, a bit, you know, there's a billion people over here on this part of the world. Yeah. So I decided to um, 
try to take it a step further and um, incorporate other genres with reggae, you know, the Afro beat and the hip hop. Yeah. Work for us. So on this album, you have a range of artists, which you mentioned. So do you have a personal relationship with all of them or are some of them kind of you just reach out to them blindly? How I started out in this business was I started to promote and market music for other artists, some of the mainstream reggae artists. And in that, I developed a friendship with them. And I started in marketing and promoting the music of other artists and for other artists, you know, major reggae artists in the industry. Mm. And from there, developed a relationship with them and a friendship with them. And I told them what my concept was, of putting together these blockbuster compilation albums. And they supported me and um, supported me with music. A lot of the artists, I mean, there's people, a range of, of followings. I mean, you ha- you mentioned like Chata Whale, who has a, a big following in Ghana, but there's also people of, who are lesser known. So what made you want to reach out to the people of lesser known following to have them join on this album as well? Okay, well, you know, exposing new talent and new artists is um, something that I always uh, encourage in the industry. And most of the new talent on the projects, uh, they reached out to us. They reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to be a part of it. And um, I gave them a shot, you know. Um, There are a lot more new artists Mm -hmm. that have been on there, but they just couldn't make it on there. There wasn't enough space. I went through the album and it's a very long album and it's a lot of great songs with a lot of great talent. So do you have any favorite tracks on that album? Do I have any favorite tracks on this album? Well, you know, um, what I find is that some people, and depending on the age group and their background, they uh, like different songs. And I like to see the um different you know uh feedback coming in from different people just from the audience basically mm-hmm. and you know obviously from an executive producer standpoint i obviously prefer the song that sells the most mm-hmm. you know the song that streams the most yeah you know this song that um Brings in the most income, the most money. And that would be Dream by Shatawali. Okay. You know, also went to number one in uh, Ghana in all genres as a single. So I'm very appreciative of that song, uh, but I don't have a favorite, to be honest. Did you play any other roles in setting this album up besides being the producer, such as maybe investments in it or any other tasks that you had to get involved in setting this project up? With something like this, there becomes there comes such a lot of work that goes into it. And, um, you know, I had to learn about the Ghanaian, Ghanaian market I had to learn about how they think, you know, uh, things like they like to, uh, they like free downloads a lot. So we had to um, eliminate any free downloads and uh, we had to communicate with them, you know, on a daily basis, um, you know, during pre-order, you know, through social media and engaging with them. Hmm. So, I mean, I'm the executive producer i didn't actually produce a song you know that was done by individual producers i just licensed the songs for use on the album you know there's a lot of work that has to go into just um all of those elements to make it happen you know yeah and i would like to say though that you know it's there's a lot of teamwork for it to work. You have to have a lot of teamwork. Yeah. So I had to communicate a lot with the Shata movement in Ghana who taught me how to enter into the market. Mm-hmm. And I had to, uh, my team in the States 
my team in the UK, my team in Canada, all played a role. Uh, you know, of course, we're not perfect, you know, and um, we make mistakes and we, um, we have disagreements, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm the one who takes the responsibility for any failure. You know, I, the buck stops with me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't blame anyone else if, you know, if we didn't sell 100,000 and we wanted to, you know, that's, I take the blame for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Were there other countries besides Ghana that you were targeting in Africa? Um, well, along the way, I learned that Nigeria is neighboring um, Ghana. And um, so I wanted to expand from Ghana into Nigeria. And um, by our sales reports, we went to top 10 in reggae in 14 different countries, you know, Finland. We went to number one in the United Arab Emirates in reggae. Mm -hmm. uh, Italy, Germany. We went to top 10 in 14 countries in reggae, in the reggae genre. Europe and Africa gave us the most support. So, um, this is my first project targeting um, Africa, and now I'm hooked on it. I want to penetrate the market more, you know. Oh, yeah, I know Africa is ha has a lot of uh, interest in reggae. I mean, Ghana is really popular, but I know Kenya is a really popular country where there's a lot of you know fan favorites in reggae music. Yes, yes, I've learned that the entire African continent, you know, they love reggae. Um, and I think I attribute that to Roots Reggae because I look at the charts and I study them. And, you know, your Bob Marley's and, your, you know, Peter Tosh's and, you know, your Roots Reggae artists really do a lot, do very well there. So how long did this project take from just the idea of making this compilation album to its actual publication? We took a few months. Um, I would say six to seven months. You know, first you conceptualize it. And um, then you have to get the music together. You know, you have to put the team together. You know, so it's, it's, it took a few months, almost a year to put it together. Oh, that's cool. And you mentioned that this is the third volume of this series. So are we expecting the next one maybe next year or sometime soon? Well, uh, yes. Uh, we're putting, you know, starting with the concept, you know, because you need something. You always need something fresh and different. Yeah. You know, and um, before that, we're thinking of uh, doing a docu docu film about this album, uh, the making of it, how we made it. And um, so we're thinking of putting a short docu-film together. And uh, then we're gonna move on to the next project. And the concept has to, it has to be outstanding. And, you know, uh, the group of artists has to be, try to, you have to try to outdo yourself. And uh, usually, these things you can't really, you can plan it, but you kind of have to let the mystic lead you along the way. Yeah. When you talk about it, the idea of making a docu-film, so what brought you the interest in doing that? Well, I, uh, because I think that the people in Ghana would be interested. It's the first time a reggae artist has ever headlined a reggae comp. Uh, sorry, an African artist. It's the first time an African artist has ever headlined a reggae compilation, hmm. you know, being the first of it out of Jamaica. It's never happened. Yeah. You know, you, you normally have African artists on the compilation, but they're just one of the artists on it, you know. So, um, and it's the first time a reggae album has ever gone to number one in Africa in all genres. Hmm. So, um, I think that the people in Ghana would be interested to see how it came together. 
So what are some artists that you would like to see in the upcoming volumes? We definitely like to see some more African yeah. headliners like Burna Boy, yeah. uh, Wizkid, um, even the arch rival of uh, Shatawali, the Stone Boy in Ghana, and um, you know some more foundation artists before we lose all of them. You know we just lost Tut, so yeah. I'd like to have some more foundation artists on. No, that's great. I would love to see a lot of legends. I mean, you mentioned Toots who passed away, but there's a lot of, you know, legendary artists that I would love to see, like, coming out with new music. I mean, I know they're working with other musicians, but I, I definitely the legends, I would love to see them produce new music. I mean, either on their own or with other artists. Yes, I mean, the legends, um, they have so much to offer. Um, in terms of their craft, their technique, their delivery. Uh, the, the foundation artists, they have so many things to offer in terms of their craft, their technique, their delivery, um, their performance. They have so much to offer to the younger generation of artists and mm -hmm. also to the younger audience, you know, oh, yeah. to show you know how much of a high quality and standard reggae music is coming from one person or one foundation artist that i would love to see maybe more new music is lee scratch perry i, I think he he still does performances but he's someone that i would love to just see new music from yeah lee scratch perry he, he was on our first um, album uh in a song with another he lives in switzerland and um, I know a Swiss artist, reggae Rasta artist, named uh, Cookie the Herbalist. And he submitted a song. He and Lee Scratch submitted this song for the first compilation called Ease. And um, that album, Tropical House Cruises to Jamaica, that album did 19 weeks. It came out in 2018. It did 19 weeks on the Billboard Reggae Top 10 charts, and we did four weeks at number one. Nice. I've been through this album plenty of times, and I noticed on this album that there's about twice more tracks than there are on the previous compilation albums. So what's the reason for that expansion? Well, um, coming into uh, COVID, um, we thought that it would be a time to offer more for your buck, more bang for the buck. So we wanted to have more songs um, and just give people more for their money. You know, and there was, there's a movement now towards a lot of people doing just EPs. It's yeah. like pop, just the EP. So I wanted to do the opposite and offer more for the, for the money. So what are your thoughts on a lot of, I guess, this new wave of musicians now just producing a lot of singles instead of albums? Well, you know, um, there's a market for singles in that they can do the music videos and put the videos up and get a lot of streams and make a lot of money like that. Uh, so, you know, there's not really that much of an incentive to make an album. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, you know, the younger generation, they have to make their money. So, you know, I'm not going to fight them. I like it. You know, they're doing their thing. Since this compilation album includes pretty much people all over the world, you mentioned like Lee Scratch Perry was on the first one and he's, he's in Switzerland, even though he's, you know, originally from Jamaica, but then you have African artists and uh, you mentioned Ed Sheeran's uh, cousin, who I think is based in the UK. So what's the reason for titling this volume series, Tropical House Cruises to Jamaica? Well, at the time when we did it, there was a lot of controversy about the name Tropical House and people saying that, um, you know, they're taking dance hall and they're now calling it Tropical House. I decided to use those two words. And then Damien Marley's uh, Welcome to Drum Rock Cruise. It's basically the most innovating, you know, eye-opening thing in reggae music. Uh, 
for decades. Welcome to Jamrock Cruise. So I put the cruise concept in the title. So we have tropical house houses to check. What would you say is the best setting to probably listen to this album? Would it be probably on a cruise or maybe just at a party or a club? What would you recommend someone in a setting for someone to listen to this album? Well, it's like, you know, when you're, when you're home and you're going to, you know, um, go on a task or you're at work and you're going to go on a task, you know, um, that requires, you know, a lot of your energy, whether mentally or physically. This is the kind of album you can listen to to get prepared to get in the zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There must be a song in here that's going to, you know, really uh, jolt you and inspire you. This gets you in the zone to work, you know? No, it's funny you mention it because, I mean, I listen to a lot of reggae music and, I mean, usually it's if I'm probably just on the beach or just hanging out, but I know specifically when it comes to dance hall music, which a lot, you oh. a lot of musicians that are involved in the album, kind of makes me want to, like, I use it as my playlist when I work out or run or something like that. Yes, yes. You know, um, music is very healing. It's very healing. And um, at the right time, that song hits you, you know, you, it can fire you up, you know. Um, sometimes I even listen to, uh, you know, dance all tracks. It might be gun lyrics, you know, shoot them up lyrics. But I'm not really going to shoot somebody literally, yeah. but I'm going to shoot up the place with some work. Yeah. Know? So um, it still inspires me. So what made you want to start these compilation albums in the first place? Well, um, I'm inspired by uh, Sly and Robbie, who I've seen do it over the years and um, win Grammys and get Grammy nominations. Uh, I live like 10 minutes from Chris Blackwell. You know, he's at Golden Eye and I live yeah. about 10, 15 minutes away. Oh, wow. Um, I've been to his place over there at Golden Eye, and um, I met him a few times. And um, I'm inspired by his story as an executive producer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Sly and Robbie, Chris Black, really inspired me. What's the, I guess, biggest lesson that you've learned from Chris Blackwell? Well, Chris Blackwell is, if you look at what he did with uh, Bob Marley. He took Bob Marley from the group and created this individual, created this sound, you know, the, the, the concept behind him with this band, you know, you have the horn section, you have the, um, you know, the rock section, you know, the roots rock reggae concept, you know, and marketed it to the UK, you know, and then throughout Europe and America, you know, so that work, the brainchild, the marketing concept behind the great Bob Marley, you know, that's something that people very rarely explore or think about. But um, I guess because he lives down the street, you know, I and I see the success he's had, mm -hmm. you know, it inspires me, you know. Uh, he's a legend, and I mean, I'm sure he's a wealth of knowledge to, you know, to l sponge from. But yeah, and uh, GoldenEye must be a beautiful place because, I, I mean, I've obviously heard of it. And being a James Bond fan myself, I would love to actually visit GoldenEye myself. Yeah, well, um, you can fly into the Ian Fleming Airport. It's a private airport, maybe five minutes from his property. And then they'll drive you down there. You know, and um, you can interview him like you're interviewing me. So yeah, <laughs> no, I would love Set to do that. That's not a bad idea. Set it up. You know, he's eighty something. So hey, you need to do it soon. Yeah, I gotta hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard you mention before that you're actually anticipating a tour in regards to the compilation album. So are there any updates in regards to that? Well, 
um, obviously tours are on hold at the moment. So basically what we've been doing is this dialogue logging with Shatawali and his team. We already know we have the Jamaican artists, you know, very close at our fingertips. So we have dialogue with Shatawali and basically seeing how he feels, how he likes to go on the road, what's his setup. You know, and so that as things open up, we know exactly how to approach it. Are there any locations out there anywhere in the world that you would really like to do the tour at? Well, you know, um, I've been to Europe uh, basically every year for the last maybe seven years. And um, what I find is that even an artist like Shatawali, he has never done the European tour circuit. In other words, the festivals, the yeah. European festival circuit. He's never done that. You know, um, last year I went with Sean Kingston. We did five shows in England and Sean Kingston is someone else too. He has never done the European reggae festival circuit. Hmm. I think there are what, 80? There's a large number of festivals, reggae festivals in Europe every year. Yeah. I would like us to go to the festivals with our contingent of artists. And that's what we're looking to do. I'm already in dialogue with a few agents, but of course, everything is on hold. I would love to catch a tour or a show if you, if you do any shows stateside, especially South Florida, since we're known to love reggae over there. And I, I would love to see Sean Kingston. I know he actually went to the same high school as I did. I think he was a year before me, so he's someone that I would love to just talk about and see if we know the same people. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm sure he um, would love that. You know, he's a cool guy, very down to earth. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's had some life experiences that has made him, you know, who he is. And uh, he's, he's great to be on the road with. I want to ask a little bit about you and your background. You were mentioning it earlier before, but I, I mean, obviously you have a lot of experience and you have a lot of interesting experience to share with other people. So what got you interested in just being a music producer in the first place? Um, well, music, um, I went to college in, um, I went to university in Florida, I went to FIU. Okay. And for that, you know, in my earlier college years, um, you know, you, I was around a heavy contingent West Indian community. So we um, we used to follow the music very hard and um, you know keep up with what's going on in Jamaica. And um, you know, so my writing skills, my writing. Which um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very, you know, artistry, you know. Uh, so I studied political science. So because I was a writer, I used to write poetry and so on. Um, and then I studied political science. I started to, of course, you know, get into conscious music. You know, and uh, from there, I wanted to make an impact. You know, I feel like reggae music has done so much for me, not only uh, to provide an income, you know, uh, formally and informally. And it also uh, has done so much for my life in terms of uh, guiding me through the healing process that I wanted to put out music that could actually have an impact, a positive impact on people. I'm not a purist where, you know, uh, I only have uh, purist songs, you know, there's some gangster songs out there, you know, um, but in a, not in a literal way, just in a way where, you know, it's not done by real gangsters, it's just done by poets. Yeah. What are some reggae musicians that you like to listen to? When I was being introduced to reggae, obviously I liked, um, I'm someone, I like music that has passion. 
So I used to listen to my dad's records. Hmm. He had uh, like culture, you know, Joseph Hill and you know, Break We Eyes and Dennis Brown, you know. So I listened to the foundation reggae artists. It has to have uh, something spiritual about it, you know. And um, I also listen to uh, dance hall, these young artists. You know, I don't listen to much of them, but some of them I do listen to. So what are some artists of this new generation that you really like, that you can see them really blowing up sometime soon? Well, um, Skilly Bang. Skilly Bang out of, you know, Kingston City, you know, Grand Spen. It's grindy. But I like it. I like the males too. I think they have a shot. You know, with, uh, you know they, you know, they try to be sexy and try to fit in with the American girls. So, you know, I like their approach. You know, and um, I like some of the other artists who have already been successful, like Idonia. You know, obviously Cartel. You know, I pretty much. You know, at some point or the other, I like somebody's song. You know, yeah. I like somebody song at least one time. For people who are not familiar with it, you you've actually had the nickname called Contractor. So, how did you get that nickname in the first place? Well, that nickname um, when I was in college, you know, I I guess it was just our group and the role I played. I tried to be the person to um, try to help us to set up something, you know, organized, you know, where we can do a business, you know, make money. And, uh, I'm a very, was a very social person with our West Indian group, other Jamaicans, other Trinis, Guyanese, all in this melting part of America, going to school, trying to get educated and, you know, um, we had a close knit uh, crew, you know, of male and female, you know, and good friends. So they gave me that. No, it's a suitable name. I mean, you obviously are the contractor for these compilation albums, or the the man that sets it up. So it, it's it's a name that suits you very well. So you also have the contractor music group company that you started. So what made you want to develop that company? Well. Um, where I live in Ocho Rios is uh, very close to Irie FM. Well, this is where Irie FM is. Uh, this is where it's broadcast from. And um, I started to uh, work with a lot of the disc jockeys, on ear disc jockeys. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started out working with the morning show called The Wake Up Call with uh, Rod Shed at the time. And we are uh, just working along with him, uh, watching how the show is produced, helping him as a part of the morning team, production team for the show. Uh, my experiences led me to just... Um, a whole level of promotion and marketing in the business where I had to start a company to make it legit. Is your company also doing any other projects besides the compilation albums? Well, the company, the core of it is it markets and promotes music mm -hmm. for artists. You know, their, their music, their music videos. You know, I mean, uh, I just did a project with an artist from Malaysia who signed with Sony Malaysia, that Sassy the Don. I work with a lot of international reggae artists. I work with a lot of local reggae artists to get their music out there to the world, their music, their videos, get them interviews. Um, you know, so I'm constantly, that's the core of the business that I'm constantly yeah. Are there any other projects or maybe mm -hmm. business ideas that you really want to get involved with outside of what you're doing now? Well, as I was saying to you earlier, I want to explore the visual side some more, you know, in terms of docufilms or short films, 
uh, you know, and uh, musical projects, musical film projects, short film musical projects. So that's kind of what's going on in my head right now as something on the horizon. No, I would love to see that. And I mean, visuals is always cool. I, I would say I'm developing a lot of experience in videography. I'm very new to it, but I've done a lot of the YouTube videos and editing. And I start looking at, since I've started doing this or started developing the skill, I look at videos a lot differently now, especially like, you know, big budget uh, films or movies or even music videos. And I always look at it and I'm, I'm like, I can do that on a very tight budget too. But I'm always looking at videos and how I can do that or how can I, I can make it better. But yeah, I think visuals is always something very challenging, but, you know, rewarding or it's a good skill to develop. Yes, the visual uh, side of it um, is something that more artists need to explore. Yeah. Uh, yes, you know, you look at 50 Cent, for example, uh, he got it. You know, he hit the nail on the head and started to, uh, you know, diversify. And in this age of, you know, especially now, you know, everything is virtual. People need content. Yeah, especially with YouTube videos out there. People want to see all those music videos. And I know it's a really popular thing now that artists are basically making a visual for every single that they have out. Right. Well, you know, the YouTube world and the music video world, it's, again, it's limited. It's not real, uh, real theater, like what people want to see now, you know? And the music video is good. You have uh, Netflix. That's why Netflix is so popular, because people wanted something that was deep. So, uh, you know, I think if we can all, you know, yourself included, fill that void, you know, for content that people want to see. You know, for example, you watch a music video one time, you probably don't want me to watch it again. Yeah. I'll put on a music video, but if it's usually just to watch a song. I have to really like an artist or and really like the song to just sit down and watch the video. But usually I'll just play videos just to listen to the music. Yeah, I like to watch on live performances. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, Sean, we're at a recurring segment in this podcast called Words of Wisdom. So this question is, share with us a quote that you live by and tell us why. Well, you know, my, I have Jamaican parents and um, they have been instilling a lot of quotes in me. So there are a lot of quotes that, you know, we, we live by because our parents are constantly saying that. You know, um, so if I were to think of one quote that I live by, I would use my high school motto, which is in Latin, it's age quada gis, which means whatever you do, do your best. You know, whatever you do, do your best at it. So, you know, I don't have to be the best, but I have to, I strive to do my best. All right. No, that's, that's a great quote. That's something I would say that I, try to live by too is just that if i do something i go full force i don't go halfway don't go partial just give it my all and hope for the best but no that's a good quote to live by since we're wrapping up is there anything you want to share with our listeners um i would encourage your listeners to uh go out and buy the album stream the album uh tropical house cruises to jamaica the reggae collector's edition you know and i want to big up all the artists uh, who are on the album, you know, um, my friend Don Ute, you know, was on the album. Uh, we went to high school together. And I want to pick up the producers on the album, you know, Top Braff Entertainment. Uh, I want to pick up Boss Lady Music, Tommy Lee Sparta, you know, uh, DJ Boyd, you know, just all the people who contributed to make it happen. I want to say thank you, you know. For a listener, yeah, definitely catch that album. And I mean, I've I've listened to it plenty of times. I usually listen to it just as a playlist when I work out or go to the gym or run. But yeah, that's a that's how I usually like to listen to the album. But I mean, other people could have their own forms or ways to listen to it. But it's a great album. I appreciate you taking the time and doing this chat with me. But Sean Edwards, thank you so much for joining us in Irie Chat, and best of luck on everything. All right, thank you.